You're watching KTBI St. Louis. Live, local, late breaking. Fox 2 News at 9 starts now. And the life-saving gift babies can offer just as they take their first breaths. To go from no hope at all to hope, it's a miracle. It makes you just want to sit and cry. A baby's first gift is keeping him alive. Coming up, a simple and painless act that's saving lives. Plus, an in-depth look at the life-saving gift newborn babies can give when they are just minutes old. Expecting a baby? Your newborn can give the gift of life, even as it takes its first few breaths of life. Mothers are donating umbilical cord blood, and St. Louis doctors are using it to save lives. In fact, we're on the cutting edge of this technology. Tonight, in a special Health Watch, I'll show you how this precious first gift works and two teenagers who are alive because of it. These freezers contain liquid nitrogen cooled to minus 259 degrees Fahrenheit. It preserves thousands of samples of potentially life-saving cord blood at the St. Louis Cord Blood Bank at Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. It all starts with expectant mothers. Michelle Dillon is pregnant with her fifth child. She plans to donate the umbilical cord blood. They fill out a form. After you deliver, they, they take the blood and it's, it's very easy. Dr. David Weinstein of Consultants and Women's Healthcare urges all his patients to donate. It's called the First Gift Program. That's a very nice thing that you're doing. First gift the baby can give to somebody else. Great. The extra blood that's in the umbilical cord uh, can actually be used to harvest stem cells and they're used to transplant into children all over the world who are dying of uh, diseases that can often be cured or um, those children can be saved by stem cell transplants. After the baby is delivered, the umbilical cord is clamped and cut. The blood is collected and sent here to the St. Louis Cord Blood Bank. The stem cell content of the umbilical cord blood is sufficient to completely restore the ability of your bone marrow stem cells to make red cells, white cells, and platelets. The blood sample is checked for the amount of stem cells, the creators of all our blood cells. The stem cells are tissue typed and entered into the National Marrow Donor Program database. The blood is then frozen and stored until needed to save someone's life. Someone like teenager Jessica Hahn of Arnold. Already a cancer survivor, a blood test around Christmas of 2000 showed her bone marrow was failing. I got really upset because I knew what, it was, um, I knew what I went through the first time. It was like being kicked in the stomach all over again. At this point, I didn't know if I could do it all over again. Jessica survived a cancerous bone tumor in her leg five years ago. But doctors believe the heavy chemotherapy damaged her bone marrow. She would need a transplant, so doctors searched for a cord blood donor that matched. A search of the database takes only a couple of minutes. An advantage of cord blood is it doesn't have to be a perfect match. There's initial six numbers that you look at to match. So if you can't find a perfect six out of six match, you can go, well, can I find five out of the six numbers to match? If you can't find that, even with cord blood, four out of six is considered acceptable. They found a match, and Jessica received her transplant at Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. She was very sick for a while, but it worked. Now, a year later, she comes in once a month for a checkup. How are things? Yeah, they're great. I feel just like a normal like person, just like I did beforehand. I am relieved. I am very happy that everything worked out the way it did. Um, you know, Jessica could have went either way with us. Another advantage of cord blood is it's already collected, stored, and ready to go. If cord blood is needed for a transplant, it's shipped out in a container like this, and it doesn't just stay around here. This map has red dots that show where the units have gone. As you can see, all over the United States, over to Europe, some down to South America, and as far away as Australia and New Zealand. About the same time Jessica was fighting her battle here, a Clarksville, Tennessee teenager, Jeffrey Cudworth, was about to lose his fight against leukemia. My husband and I were told back in January that it could be anywhere from 6 to 12 months. He needed a bone marrow transplant, and doctors searched desperately for a match. The way I see it, if they were going to have found a bone marrow donor, they would have found one already. What they did find was a cord blood match at the St. Louis Cord Blood Bank. The frozen stem cells were shipped out, and Jeffrey received his transplant in March of last year. 
Within weeks, he was on his way to recovery. Well, I know I got a chance now. To go from no hope at all to hope, it's a miracle. It makes you just want to sit and cry. The baby is totally separate from the collection, so it doesn't interfere with the actual birth at all. Donating cord blood is free. The results, priceless. Products from our cord blood bank save somewhere between 80 and 100 lives each year. That's pretty neat. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so, that's what it's about. I just wanted to say thank you to all those moms. moms. If it wasn't for that cord blood, I, mean, I don't know where I'd be today. Michelle Dillon delivered her baby, a little boy named Peter. And Peter has given the first gift that could save a life like Jessica's or Jeffrey's. It's such a gift that you can give, and it's easy. Umbilical cord blood is usually just thrown away, so using it as a source of stem cells avoids the controversy over embryonic stem cells. Jeffrey Cudworth has had a few setbacks but remains in remission. Jessica will celebrate her one-year transplant anniversary on Valentine's Day. Because of privacy issues, neither will ever know who donated the life-saving cord blood.